Okay, guys, walk with me here for a minute. Let's say you're in the dog house with your sweetheart, wife, significant other, because I don't know, for any reason, it could be any reason. Maybe you told the truth, <laughs> got in trouble for it, anything. And you need a way to show your sweetheart that you care, that you want to score some points, that you want to get out of the dog house, whatever the case may be. I have got a primo recipe for you guys. Simple, easy to make, cost about 30 bucks. And she will think you are amazing. Stick with me. So some of you may have heard of this uh, chain of restaurants in you know larger cities nationwide called the melting pot it's basically a fondue restaurant and uh, you know they serve these fancy fondues cheese fondues coke oven you know stuff like that uh, a great place to you know take your sweetheart for date night or whatever uh, but uh, if any of you have been to this you know it's quite easy that for a couple it's easy to drop two bills at a place like that Here's the thing. I found some sources online with copycat recipes for several of their fondues. I share two of those recipes with you. The first one is their famous cheese uh, fondue recipe. The second one is a dessert fondue recipe. So, guys, I'll tell you, man, steal some flowers out of the neighbor's garden, put them in a mason jar on the table. Um, you know, go to the uh, go to go to the farmers market, pick up some fresh vegetables, which we'll go through in a minute. Uh, just uh, pick up some good cheese, bottle of wine, or some beer, and you guys have got a romantic evening that will score you Boku points. So stick with me; we're going to go through this recipe. There is one investment besides the thirty dollars or so that is required on your part. And it is going to require you to invest in one of these if you don't already have it. This is a Cuisinart fondue. Uh, it's got a nonstick surface on the inside. It's got a little tray here for holding your forks in place. And it comes with, comes with eight of these fondue forks. And they're color coded. So each person who gets one knows which is theirs. And um, so, you know, these things, I don't know. You can probably find them on sale from Bed Bath & Beyond for 25 or 30 bucks sometimes, but I think the regular price is like 30 or 40, maybe maybe 45 or 50, I don't know. But if you ask me, it's a good investment, so long as you remember to use this at least a couple of times a year, um, you know, it, it works. I think another thing that may work for you is a double boiler and maybe a uh, like a sterno underneath it or something. I don't know, whatever works for you. But uh, this isn't a bad investment. Now, here are the ingredients. Very simple ingredients. This is so easy to do, guys. It's not even funny. You can put this thing together in about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes if you have all the ingredients together. It goes together so easily. And here's how you do it. With your fondue pot. And in it, you will add 12 ounces of beer. Now, this is an Oktoberfest, which is a good beer for this kind of thing. <laughs> European fondue. Uh, you know, good, good, uh, good flavors, uh, things like that. I recommend that you do not use a thin American beer like a Coors or a Budweiser or even a light beer. Don't use those. Go for something with some more flavor like an Oktoberfest or a Belgian ale or a wheat beer uh, or something like that. Something with more body and more flavor. Um, and Keep in mind, you're going to use at least all of this bottle and perhaps part of another one just to keep this moist because these fondue pots have a way of drying out uh, your fondue pretty quickly uh, unless you eat it fast. So you're going to, don't, don't take a swig from this, pour the whole thing in there and then open a different one you can swig from and maybe even pour in a little extra. You're also going to need two teaspoons of ground mustard. You're gonna need a quarter cup of flour and you're gonna need 
four tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. You're also going to need four teaspoons of minced garlic. So there you go. And uh, those are the ingredients. And then besides that, of course, you need the good stuff. Now by good stuff, I mean you need extra sharp cheddar cheese. 16 ounces of it and eight ounces of a good Swiss cheese. Listen guys, do not buy Kraft or the store brand cheeses, okay? Get some good cheese. Make sure your cheddar is extra sharp, get a good block of it and grate it yourself. And then with the Swiss, do not buy baby Swiss. Baby Swiss has no flavor. Baby Swiss is for babies, okay? Do not buy baby Swiss. Buy a good, rich, cave-aged, or something like that, full-bodied Swiss cheese with the big holes in it, an Emmentaler, or you know something like that. Do not buy a French Swiss cheese because those are baby Swiss, okay? Grate it up, mix it all together like I've done, and this has been sitting in the freezer for a little while so that it doesn't you know turn to goo while I'm preparing other things. All right, then what you wanna do, take that quarter cup of flour, sprinkle it in here. The flour is going to give you a little body to the, um, to the um, cheese, uh, I'm sorry, the, the fondue. And it helps to mix it with the cheese like this so it'll cling to the cheese gratings instead of going into the fondue pot in a big lump and causing some kind of dumpling or something in there that you don't want, okay? So mix it in really well. Make sure that there's no flour sitting in the bottom, okay? And again, until you're ready to use it, put it back in the freezer. So this is the way I have the table set up. You can set it up how you want, make it prettier or less pretty. I feel pretty good on the point scale with Robber right now, so this is about as fancy as I'm gonna get tonight. At this point, you're about ready to make this fondue. So you wanna make sure that you're about 15 minutes away from the time when you can eat. I've plugged in the fondue uh, thing. I've set this one to about two, because this thing heats up really fast. Um, I mean, you don't really wanna cook this stuff too heavily. Pull off this ring. And right now is about the time when you get on the walkie-talkie and with your sweetheart who's out there deworming the cattle in the back 40 and you ask her, uh, you know, about how, about how long until she's done or is coming in or, or whatever. Here we go. First thing, beer. Do not let this boil if you can help it. This Cuisinart thing tends to be a little cantankerous. It wants to boil very quickly. Uh, and easily don't don't let it do that if you can help it put in your mustard powder or your I mean, your ground mustard sorry and your what's this here sauce and your garlic Get that heat up and stew for a few minutes um, it may get a little steam off it, that's fine. Just don't let it boil. Don't let it boil. You, you need to conserve all of this moisture that you can because uh, when you put that cheese and flour in there, it's gonna be like it all disappears. And you may need, as I said, to add a little bit of this beer uh, to keep it moist, a little bit more. But first, take a swig for yourself. because you're a pretty cool dude doing this for your sweetheart. And you deserve that swig. Help this heat up some more. A little more heat, let's get it warm. Mm. And that smell alone right there is just amazing. The smell of the beer, the mustard, the Worcestershire sauce, and the garlic. It's, uh, boy, this isn't your, this isn't like mac and cheese. 
This is a very uh, adult smelling and tasting uh, cheese fondue, and it is magnificent. You love it. You guys will love it. Combined with the flavors of good cheese, good cheeses, this will be good stuff. You guys will feast. And then, when she's really happy with this, that's when you spring it on her that you need that brand new pickup. Okay, I'm starting to see a little steam coming off that. That's just what we want. We don't want it too hot. And so we start adding our cheese, a little at a time, too much at a time. Don't dump it all in there at once, you wind up with a bunch of lumps. But uh, yeah, get it in there, stir some in, add some more, stir it, that kind of thing. And right about now, she is, you know, probably coming up the back road in the tractor or whatever after a long hard day of work out there in the homestead while you've been in here playing around but you are going to show her that you were a boss at making her feel special From that, maybe a little more heat. You can see, you can see it boiling. It's sort of what you, I mean, it's going to do it a little bit, but you, you got to, got to stay on top of that. You can't let it really boil away. You'd be sorry. More cheese. The unfortunate thing is, and, and you know, you really need to do this at the table because the fondue pot needs to remain plugged in while you're eating so it stays warm. Right. So it is making a little bit of a mess. Boy, it smells good. As you can see, it's a little darker than you would expect from a cheese uh, fondue that's you know part of that's the beer part of that's the Worcestershire sauce but still really tasty and let's just get the rest by now she's in the mud room or just outside scraping off her boots and uh, wondering what the heck you've been doing all day while she's been working hard There you go. It's not quite melted, but we're gonna let it sit there for a minute and do that. You can see a couple bubbles coming up. If you see bubbles coming up, try to control that, turn it down a little bit. You really don't want this stuff to burn on the bottom. And that's pretty much it right there. I mean, you've got a, you've got a dynamite meal right there. Let me show you some of the other stuff that goes with this. Get a good crusty bread. Don't use Wonder Bread or wheat bread or anything like that. Get a good French loaf or something like that. Not flavored bread, not with, not anything with herbs in it because that'll take away from the flavor of the fondue. But make sure it's a good, sort of dense, chewy bread with a good crust on it. That'd be good. Granny Smith apples. A good tart apple that goes perfect with this fondue. Uh, here we've got some English cucumbers, cauliflower, carrots, and celery. We also have some fresh broccoli that's not on here, but uh, all this together, awesome meal. And the finishing touch, a good dry wine goes good with this, like a Chardonnay or something a little, a little uh, less dry, like a Pinot Grigio uh, or even a Sauvignon Blanc goes good with this. Nice and chilled, ready to go. And there you have a wonderful fondue for your sweetheart and you. <laughs> so how do you, Robert? <laughs> it's 
so good. It looks so good. It smells so good too. It's good stuff. <laughs> bon appetit, sweetheart. Cheers. <laughs> Score. <laughs> oh gosh, this fondue is so Let's good. Try. Technically, you're supposed to dip your fondue and then pull it off the fork and put it on your plate and then use your fork to do it. Are there rules? Sure. I never knew there were rules. It's just good table etiquette. Oh. But, but you're going to find after a couple of times of doing that, you're just going to want to dip your fork straight into the pot and eat from it. I mentioned a good Chardonnay or Pinot Grigio or Sauvignon Blanc. This one is called Salmon Run. Uh, it's a Chardonnay from the Finger Lakes region of New York. And uh, it was bought for us by Thomas uh, Schmidt and Dawn over at the Thomas Schmidt Homestead Project when we were out there. So we just want you to know we're enjoying it and mm -hmm. thank you so much. It goes really good with this. Mm -hmm. It's a good wine. Okay, guys, we are absolutely full from that first fondue. So we are not going to make this second recipe. <laughs> we'll have to save it for another night. But I did promise you two recipes. So here is the bonus round. And this is where you really score. All right, chocolate fondue. Those are the two words. That's all you need to say, chocolate fondue. You can pair it with a good port, which is a sweet wine, or champagne, an Asti, um, or a sweeter wine, like a red. The sweeter, the better, because uh, this is really sweet. And believe it or not, when you have something like a port, after you take a bite of this sweet fondue, the port actually tastes a little bitter. So make sure it's a very sweet wine that you pair with this if you're gonna do that. Anyway, lots of ways you can do this, but there are two main ingredients you wanna keep in mind for this fondue, no matter how you make it, okay? One is chocolate of some kind, and the other is heavy cream, okay? You get heavy cream from the store, get, I don't know, a couple of cups worth. And the proportions are about 12 ounces of chocolate, 12 ounces of chocolate, to one and a quarter cups of heavy cream. Now, make sure when you are putting this in your fondue pot, that this pot is absolutely dry. Because if there's any moisture in here at all, it'll ball up the chocolate and make it miserable. So make sure this is dry when you use it. And, um, looking down here, you know, here are some of the things I have laid out. Remember, chocolate and heavy cream are going to be your two main ingredients. Whatever else you put in there for flavoring is up to you. You can do 12, in, uh, 12 ounces of a mixture of dark and milk chocolate, or just dark chocolate, or just milk chocolate, or German chocolate, or bittersweet chocolate, or whatever you want to do. <clears throat> But make sure you get about 12 ounces of chocolate to one and a quarter cups of heavy cream, okay? Make sure your chocolate is chopped up, you know, really good and fine. Put it in a little blender or a, a food processor or something to make it fine bit so it melts more readily. And then <clears throat> go ahead and mix those two ingredients together. And then after that, it's up to you. You can add creamy or chunky peanut butter if you want to, and it'll add a really cool flavor. You can add... Any fruit extract, like a raspberry extract, would be really good, um, and that adds a good flavor. As I said, you can mix your chocolates. Here I have four ounces of German chocolate and four ounces of semi-sweet. So you could mix semi-sweet with dark. You could mix, I don't know, however you want to do it. But just make sure the chocolate's in there. That's the main ingredient, chocolate and cream. And then, once you've got it melted and mixed in, uh, with whatever else you're gonna do, vanilla, raspberry extract, peanut butter, um, coconut cream, I mean, anything like that, uh, you have a fondue that's ready to go. So, what do you eat with it? Well, again, any number of things you want. How about small pieces of Rice Krispie treats? Here, I have some angel food cake that you can cut up into squares, or a pound cake. Heck, donuts chopped up into bits. I also have here some chopped up um, pineapple and strawberries and you can slice bananas. Any number of things that you want to put in there. You know, one other thing you could do is you could put in some uh, either coffee liqueur or some chocolate liqueur. If you want a little bit of alcohol in it, you could put some amaretto in it. 
You could put some Grand Marnier, which is a, an orange flavored kind of liqueur or brandy. You could put brandy in it. You could put cognac in it. You could put any number of things in it. But, uh, you know, just taste the proportions as you go. But make sure that you keep that ratio of 12 ounces of chocolate to one and a quarter cups of heavy cream and you'll be good to go. Add the other things as you need until it uh, tastes the way you like it and just enjoy it. Score those points, dudes. Get out there and please your ladies.